Tomb Raider then. No, not that one. Yes, sure, it's been good since the most recent reboot. It's given new life to the tired series, yada yada yada. But you saw the movie poster I used on the title card. It's pre-2001 I'll be looking at today. Frankly, I may be wasting my time doing a brief franchise history and backstory here for how huge the popularity was for the franchise, but I've never had much cause for smart decisions. Tomb Raider started off in 1996 and immediately took the world by storm. It managed to capture a 3D environment with a more grown-up theme and a kick-ass sexy heroine. Lara herself became as huge as her assets with brand advertising deals, magazine shoots, and even warranting actual models to play her for live appearances. Even from the outset of the games, they managed to portray Lara as a strong, jet-setting lady of adventure. Right off the bat, I'm going to say that Angelina Jolie nailed this aspect of Lara for her portrayal in the film. It would have been incredibly simple for them to just have resorted to cheap sex appeal for fan service in this thing, especially as Angelina was the Scarlett Johansson of her time. And sure, this is present, but not often. Every scene feels like Lara is in charge of proceedings, and everyone else needs to get on her level. A less confident actress wouldn't have been able to pull this off, but Jolie seems to get that Lara is essentially a bored aristocrat who knows that she's overcome every bit of trouble she's come looking for. This latest bit of trouble involves tracking down an artifact with the ability to reverse time and attempt to use it during a 5,000 year rare full planetary alignment to try and save her mysteriously disappeared father. Which is an especially delicious plot point in the light of Pluto being declassified as a planet, but I digress. Lara must race against the Illuminati to prevent them from recovering this artifact and using it to effectively control the world's history and future. Tomb Raider's stories have always had a slightly supernatural leaning, so this campy story in the film isn't surprising, and indeed it's quite welcome. The only thing I'd say is that is a touch strange is that the Illuminati aren't more present in this world. We see one general meeting and the head is around during the finale, but for the rest of the film we have Mr. Powell as the main antagonist. He's pretty sinister, cartoonishly so even, which I'm not entirely sure works for the film's advantage. Unfortunately, I don't think many of the supporting cast really nail their performances here. There's lots of strange accents going on, which is especially troubling from British actors playing British characters. They already think that we have laid across a piece of the triangle. What do you know? This is a disaster! I know. It gets everywhere. In the cracks. Yes, it is fascinating. Having said all that, though, a pre-Bond Daniel Craig is pretty good as a rival American Tomb Raider, even if it comes as a surprise that he was supposed to be Lara's love interest. Oh, don't talk to me about spoilers. The film didn't do its job of conveying that fact, so it shouldn't expect me to feel for Lara at the end when she's suspected to save him. You want spoilers? Fine. Powell kills the head of the Illuminati during the ritual scene by surprise, issuing an order to his minions. It's a plot point that comes out of nowhere, makes no sense, and ultimately doesn't add anything to the story. Even if some of the story beats do fall flat, I actually enjoyed every one of the action set pieces here. The bungee rope fight especially felt pretty unique to me. Obviously the 12 rating does limit the amount of violence possible, which could neuter an action film, but each of the scenes has something good to see, even if some of the CG is starting to show its age. The environments in the film are also a sight to see, with even a brief stint at the Angkor Wat in Cambodia being especially memorable. The film obviously gets the jet-setting nature of the games, and so contrives itself to take place in varied locales around the world, whilst also capturing the personality of each area. It could have ended up feeling pretty schizophrenic, but somehow it all seems to come together. Another thing that's pretty refreshing about the film is its sense of humour. There are very human touches that often come to diffuse attention after some overly dramatic movie moment. It just shows that the film isn't too cool for itself, and even acknowledges the source material was a game, a piece of media to be enjoyed. I'm coming out of this review somewhat pleasantly surprised. When I remember back seeing this film about ten years ago, I remember liking it, sure, but much close to meh than what I feel now. I'm dangerously close to my first recommendation of a film adaptation of a game. It certainly doesn't push any envelopes, and some might feel it adds nothing to the upper echelons of the action genre, but I certainly enjoyed it, and you might too.